Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem and we are with Neelam Path Lectures, the Pursue series. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube. We also have a Telegram group which helps you in accessing all lecture related information. All the flyers of the lectures are uploaded here. We also have a Google Drive where the PDF of all the lectures are available. This is the link for the drive and we have a, have a master integration key which helps you in nav navigating between the drive and the YouTube lectures. These are the disclaimers and we are with phase 3 and today we have Pursue 7U which is Neuropathology which is the Pran disease and we are streaming from IPGMR Kolkata and to talk on that we have Dr. Shristi Bhutta she is an MBBS Honours Gold Medalist MD in Pathology she is a demonstrator in the Oncopathology Unit at the Department of Pathology IPGMER and SSKM Hospital Kolkata, West Bengal She's got 12 publications in national and international journals. Her special interests being neuropathology, molecular genetics, and hematopathology. With this, I will request Dr. Shristi Bhutta, ma'am, please start your lecture on prions disease. Thank you so much, all yours. Thank you. A very good morning. We are back again with our neuropathology lecture series, and today we will be discussing about prion diseases. So without much ado, let's start. So what do we plan to discuss today? We plan to discuss about prions, yes, their definition and structure, pathogenesis of prion diseases, types of prion diseases, pathology, specifically the macroscopic and the microscopic findings, immunohistochemistry for prion diseases, CSF examination in case of prion diseases, and Crutusfeld Jacob disease and overview of it. So let's start. What is a prion? Prion, as the term implies, is a proteinaceous and infectious agent that does not contain any nucleic acid component, nor is it degradable by typical sterilization. So the term prion stands for proteinaceous infectious particle that lacks any nucleic acid component. The term was coined by Stanley Prusno. Earlier, prion diseases were thought to be degenerative diseases. Later on, it was thought that these diseases could be transmitted and therefore they were reclassified as infectious diseases. At one point, they were also called slow virus diseases like HIV. However, there are obvious differences between bacteria, viruses and prions. For one thing, prions contain no nucleic acids. That is very, very important. They damage neurons either directly or, to be noted, they do not elicit. They do not elicit any inflammatory and immune reactions. So now coming to the structure. A normal prion protein has amino acids in alpha helix with less than 5% of the beta sheets. So as you can see in this diagram, let me just highlight it with a laser pointer, that there is more of alpha helix as compared to the beta sheet. Okay, so the beta sheet accounts for less than 5% of the prion protein. On the other hand, an abnormal or misfolded protein has more of the beta helix as compared to the alpha helix. So as shown in the diagram, 50% or rather more than 50% of the protein is composed of the beta helix as compared to the alpha helix, right? Now what is transmissible spongiform encephalopathy? Transmissible spongiform encephalopathies are caused by abnormal folding of prions, right? Or misfolding of the normal prions. So a normal prion protein is designated by the PRPC, and this is nothing but a 35 kilodalton membrane glycoprotein, which is water soluble and proteinase sensitive. An abnormal prion protein, however, is designated as PRPSC and results from a change in the folding pattern of the PRPC, which makes it resistant. Note, it becomes resistant to the protease digestion and is often precipitated in the form of an insoluble amyloid plaque. So this conversion results in a characteristic neuronal degeneration. So this figure shown alongside shows you several microscopic holes that you can make out in the gray matter of the cerebral hemisphere. So what you can see or rather make out is the spongy form appearance of the cerebral gray matter. 
which is absolutely characteristic of the transmissible spongy form encephalopathy or crutus fell jacob disease now prtc is encoded by the protein gene called as the prnp gene now this gene is present on chromosome number 20 and it plays a critical role in multiple cellular functions including cell adhesion ion channel activity and neuronal excitability all of which is obviously lost when there is a mutation in the prnp gene now coming to the pathogenesis of prion diseases the unique feature of a prion disease is self propagation and transmissible nature now once this prpsc is produced or rather generated endogenously or introduced into the body from the environment it converts the normal prion proteins into the abnormal ones so always remember that once this prpsc is produced or is inoculated into an individual what happens is that a normal prion protein is converted into an abnormal one so this conversion begins with the initial production of the small polymer of misfolded protein which is usually not more than 28 molecules as more prpsc polymers are produced they in turn act as seeds okay they act as seeds therefore propagating the conversion of the normal proteins to the abnormal prions so that is the basic pathogenesis of prion diseases self propagation this novel mechanism is also implicated in diseases like the alzheimer's disease parkinson's disease and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis which will be discussed in the next class now prion diseases for that matter always show the characteristic initiation okay propagation and aggregation and this is followed by a characteristic neuronal damage which is associated typically with prion diseases majority of the human prion diseases are sporadic about 15 percent however are familial and they are autosomal dominant a few however are environmentally acquired or hydrogenic and result from eating of a bovine spongy form encephalopathy contaminated meat okay in familial prion diseases the major change is the formation of prpsc from prpc okay and that results from mutation in the prnp gene on chromosome number 20 for sporadic prion diseases the initial seed of the prpsc is caused by somatic mutations or rather by post translational modifications now the cell pathways or rather the cell death pathways that have been implicated in prion diseases include the apoptotic pathway okay which correlates with astrogliosis microglial activation and axonal damage the early and the most recent uh, sequential studies have also revealed that there is a progressive loss of dendritic spines possibly by the notch 1 mediator and loss of synapses and dendritic spines occur at an early stage in the disease process so apoptosis plays a critical role in cell death specifically in prion diseases now demonstration of the morphological features of apoptosis like the dna fragmentation and activation of caspase 3 that supports that apoptosis is a relevant cell death pathway in prion diseases it has also been found that autophagy is also demonstrated by presence of autophagic vacuoles specifically in crutus fell jacob disease crepe gerstmann strossler skenke syndrome and fatal familial insomnias further studies have shown that oxidative stress is also a global event in prion diseases so not only apoptosis but also autophagy and oxidative stress result in neuronal damage associated with prion diseases 
Now coming to the types of prion diseases. Now prion diseases can either be sporadic, familial or acquired as we have discussed. Now coming to the sporadic diseases, the sporadic diseases can either be sporadic crudocell Jacob disease, okay, sporadic familial insomnias or the familial ones can be familial crudocell Jacob disease, fatal familial insomnias, gerstmann strossler skenke syndrome or it can be the acquired ones like the iatrogenic crudocell Jacob disease or the variant crudocell Jacob disease or for that matter kuru which was the first human prion disease discovered now coming to the sporadic prion diseases which account for majority of the human prion disease and accounts for 85 to 90 percent of the cases so now coming to the genetic prion diseases which account for 10 to 15 percent of all the cases and typically associated with point mutations in the coding regions of the prion protein gene that is the prnp gene on chromosome number 20. Now the genetic prion diseases as you can see are caused by several mutations okay as has been shown and those indicated in bold are usually associated with Crutusfeld Jacob disease associated phenotype okay right so there are several now coming to the animal prion diseases and human prion diseases. Animal prion diseases like the scrapie, transmissible mink encephalopathy, chronic wasting disease, bovine spongiform encephalopathy, spongiform encephalopathies in exotic ungulates and feline spongiform encephalopathy are a few. On the other hand, human prion diseases, which is the topic of discussion, for us today includes the Crutusfeld Jacob disease, which can be either sporadic, genetic, iatrogenic, or variant, variable protease sensitive proteinopathies like the uh, Gerstmann Strossler syndrome, fatal familial insomnias, and cerebral amyloid angiopathies. Now, coming to the human prion diseases and the sites of involvement. We come to the Crutusfeld Jacob disease. Now, Crutusfeld Jacob disease typically affects the cerebrum yeah and it can also affect the thalamus in a minority of the cases now this crutusfeld jacob disease can either be sporadic familial iatrogenic or variant it is the variant crutusfeld jacob disease that typically affects the cerebellum and the thalamus gerstmann strossler syndrome is an autosomal dominant slowly progressive disease typically presenting with ataxia and dementia and involves the cerebellum and the spinal cord in majority of the cases on the other hand fatal familial insomnia in majority of the cases affects the thalamus it's an autosomal dominant sleep disorder okay and in minority of cases it also affects the cerebrum it must be noted that kuru is of a historic importance and it was the first human prion disease discovered in 1976 Kuru is significantly of historic importance and that it characteristically affects the cerebellum. Now coming to Kuru. Now Kuru is the first human prion disease that was discovered and is associated with endocannibalism. It was discovered by D. Carlton Gajdusek in the year 1976 for which he was awarded a Nobel Prize. It is also the first human prion disease to be transmitted to chimpanzees and was classified as transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. However, this term, that is the transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, now encompasses a range of other prion diseases as well. So, as said, Kuru won a Nobel Prize for Gaj Dusek in the year 1976 and indirectly he also discovered prions for Stanley B. Prusner who coined the term prions in the year 1997. Indirectly, Kuru was also linked to another Nobel Prize winner, Kurt Wuchrick, who determined the structure of the prion protein. The mode of spread of this Kuru is endocannibalism, as we can see. Okay, endocannibalism is the eating of the relatives. It is uh, one of the uh, mourning rituals that is done or rather practiced in South Four. 
Now, neurons in Kuru are shrunken and hyperchromatic or pale with dispersion of the nizzle substance and a characteristic formation of intracytoplasmic vacuoles. In the striatum, some neurons as well as Purkinje cells in the cerebellum appear to be vacuolated or rather moth-eaten. Spongy form change can also be seen. So as you can see in this figure alongside, what do you see here? You see a vacuolated moth-eaten neuron, right? So you see a lot of vacuoles, intracytoplasmic vacuoles in the uh, neuron, okay? So this moth-eaten vacuolated neuron is absolutely characteristic of Kuru. Now, Kuru plaques, now what are these? These have a diameter of about 20 to 60 micrometer and appear to be round or oval in shape with a consistent darker core and a subtle radiating periphery enveloped by a pale halo. Okay, Kuru plaques are more common in the granular cell layer of the cerebellum. So as you can see or rather make out here, this is the amyloid or the Kuru plaque with characteristic radiating spicules of amyloid, right? So this is absolutely characteristic of Kuru. Now coming to the macroscopy of human prion diseases. Now brain characteristically shows atrophy, okay? And there is a characteristic ventricular enlargement that is appreciated on the macroscopy. Now coming to the classical histopathological triad of prion diseases, this includes the spongy form change, neuronal loss and gliosis, right? So spongy form change is rather very, very specific. Why? Because neuronal loss and gliosis can be appreciated in other conditions as well. So since neuronal loss and gliosis, as we have already discussed, are conditions which are associated with other diseases as well, spongy form change appears to be a very specific finding for prion diseases. Now this spongy form change can either be mild, moderate or severe. Diffuse or focally clustered small round vacuoles as you can appreciate in the figure given alongside, okay, in the neuropil are characteristic of prion diseases. These vacuoles can also sometimes become confluent. Ultrastructurally, what do you see? The spongy form change is uh, or rather corresponds to the enlarged cell processes of the neurites containing curled membrane fragments and amorphous material. So these are the ultrastructural features seen under electron microscopy of these large vacuoles. Now, histopathological features of major prion disease subtypes include the spongy form degeneration in Crutus-Pell Jacob disease, blotchy, patchy plaques of, or rather PRP plaques, okay, seen in gerstmann strossler Kenker syndrome, gliosis, which is typical for fatal familial insomnias, and variant Crutus-Pell Jacob disease showing a characteristic florid plaque, okay. Now, these florid plaques are very, very specific for variant glutus feld jacob disease. Why? Because these amyloid plaques are surrounded by the characteristic vacuoles, okay, seen in the surrounding cerebral parenchyma. The most common animal prion diseases include the scrappy, the bovine spongiform encephalopathy, transmissible mink encephalopathy and wasting disease of the deer and the elk, of which it must be noted that scrappy has been known to occur in sheep for over a hundred years. But it was however not known that these diseases are caused by prions. So that came to be known much later. Okay, bovine spongiform encephalopathy or rather the mad cow disease is a progressive neurological disorder of the cattle. Okay, and that results in a characteristic infection and um, is usually transmissible. Transmissible mink encephalopathy and wasting disease of the elk and the deer are other prion diseases seen in animals. Now coming to the pathology associated with these prion diseases. 
During the incubation period and active clinical phase of the prion disease, PRPSC is probably present in all the tissues and body fluids especially. Note, it is especially noted in the brains, nerves and skeletal muscles. The pathology develops typically in the brain with characteristic intracytoplasmic vacuoles. As the brain or rather as the disease progresses, vacuolization becomes more conspicuous in the form of a spongy form encephalopathy. Similar spongy form changes can also be seen in the cerebellum. Okay, so what do you see here? You see the brain damage associated with spongy form encephalopathy. You see the characteristic vacuolization okay, in the neurons and vacuoles in the neuropil with a characteristic spongy form appearance that you can make out. Okay, so there is a typical vacuolization or rather intracytoplasmic vacuoles that develop within the neurons. So moving on. In some prion diseases, the PRPSC precipitates as amyloid plaques, as we have already discussed. So, what are these? What are these? Yeah. Let me just highlight it with a laser pointer for you. Yes. So, what is this that you can make out? It's an amyloid plaque with characteristic radiating spicules. Okay. And this is precisely associated with Kuru. So, these are also called as the Kuru plaques. On the other hand, what do you see here? You see an amyloid plaque here, which is characteristically surrounded by vacuoles. So there is a vacuolar degeneration in the neuropil that you can make out with the plaque. So what is this? Yes, this is the plaque associated with variant Crutusfeld-Jacob disease. Okay, so this is how we differentiate between the Kuru plaque and the variant Crutusfeld-Jacob disease associated plaques in the cerebellum. So, if we summarize the histopathological features, what do we see? We see the characteristic astrogliosis that is associated. Okay, so here is the astrogliosis with characteristic reactive astrocytes as you can make out here or rather the gemistocytes which have been highlighted by the GFAP immunohistochemistry here in the inbox. On the other hand, you can also make out lots of plaques, right? And this is the PRPIHC that has been employed here to highlight these plaques, okay? We can also appreciate a lot of vacuolization in the neuropil here, which is also a very specific feature of spongy form encephalopathies, right? So besides the astrogliosis and the spongy form nature, there is also presence of amyloid plaques. Okay, let's move on. So now coming to the immunohistochemistry associated for prion diseases, and that is nothing but the PRP, okay? The normal cellular protein, that is the PRPC, is typically expressed in the neural tissues, including the neurons and the glial cells. However, it must be noted that the uterus, placenta, thymus, heart, lung, muscle and gastrointestinal tract also express considerable amount of this protein. In addition, it must be noted that upregulation of this normal protein has been associated with inflammatory conditions of the muscle, skin, liver, as well as neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's disease and other prion diseases as well, besides the expression of PRPSC. Now, what do you see here? You see the immunohistochemistry for PRP, which has highlighted the amyloid plaques associated with prion diseases, the conformational abnormal disease associated isoform accumulates in the CNS in a whole group of prion diseases and an important diagnostic marker is PRP for it. The characteristic pattern of PRP deposition can either be synaptic okay, or it can be patchy as you can make out here. It can also be perivacular or it can be plaque like. They also stain not only with the normal HNE, but they also stain with PAS, Alcyon Blue and Congo Red, okay, as well as Thioflavin S. 
So it must be noted that these PRP proteins stain not only with HNE, that is hematoxyl and eosin, but they also stain with periodic acid skiff, alcyon blue and congo red as well. Okay, and they are highlighted by the immunohistochemical marker, that is the PRP, as shown in the figure given here. Synaptic type deposits and unicentric PRP plaques occur both in Crutusfeld Jacob disease and Gerstmann Strassler Schenker syndrome, while abundant multicentric plaques are peculiar to Gerstmann Strassler Schenker syndrome. Plaque like deposits are the only type of PRP deposits extending to the subcortical white matter and are more frequent than true compact Kuru type plaques, as we have already discussed. That these Kuru type plaques have a characteristic uh, radiating or fringed outline that usually does not require any IHC. So, now coming to Crutusfeld Jacob disease. Crutusfeld Jacob disease is the most common prion disease of humans, but overall it is quite rare. Most cases are sporadic. Sporadic cases usually occur in the middle aged and elderly and present with dementia, myoclonus, and ataxia. This phenotype is also referred to as the Heden Hain variant, which is seen in 70% of Crutusfeld Jacob disease cases. One of the major features of Crutusfeld Jacob disease is the characteristic spongy form change that is noted in the cerebral parenchyma. In addition, the brain usually shrinks and there is deterioration of the brain function. Moving on. A methionine or valine polymorphism at codon 129 of the PRNP gene which is located in chromosome number 20 influences the susceptibility, clinical phenotype and pathology of sporadic Crutusfeld Jacob disease. Most patients with sporadic and iatrogenic Crutusfeld Jacob disease are methionine homozygotes. Approximately 15% of Crutusfeld Jacob disease cases are familial that is autosomal dominant in nature. Both the familial and sporadic cases are, however, clinically indistinct. It is believed that variant Crutusfeld Jacob disease is usually caused by consumption of meat products that are contaminated by bovine spongiform encephalopathy associated prions. Variant Crutusfeld Jacob disease patients are usually young patients and present with psychiatric manifestations and ataxia. The brain usually shows a characteristic spongy form change as seen in other variants of Crutusfeld Jacob disease and there are numerous amyloid plaques which are very specific for variant Crutusfeld Jacob disease. So let's see. What do we see here? We see the characteristic plaque of Crutusfeld Jacob disease okay, with the surrounding vacuolar degeneration that is noted in the surrounding cerebellar parenchyma. What is seen here in the figure B is the characteristic PRP immunohistochemistry highlighting the amyloid plaques of Crutusfeld Jacob disease. Let's move on. It is to be noted that iatrogenic Crutusfeld Jacob disease is caused by several other causes like injection of growth hormone and gonadotrophin, contaminated dural grafts, corneal transplants, and contaminated surgical instruments. So, this iatrogenic Crutusfeld Jacob disease is quite different from the variant form of Crutusfeld Jacob disease, which is caused by consumption of meat contaminated by bovine spongiform encephalopathy associated prion. Now, coming to the molecular subtypes of Crutusfeld Jacob disease. There are six molecular subtypes of Crutusfeld Jacob disease, that is MM1, MM2, MV1, MV2, VV1, and VV2. Now, M and V stand for the methionine and valine, okay, which is present at codon 129 of the gene encoding the prion protein combined with the profile of the PRPSC, that is the resistant prion protein that is produced, okay, that is either of type 1 or type 2 nature. So, let's divide. We see that the molecular subtype of sporadic Crutusfeld Jacob disease can either be MM, that is methionine methionine, or methionine valine, or valine valine, depending on the polymorphism on codon 129. And depending on the prion type, whether it is type 1 or type 2 prion proteins, it can be MM1, 2, 
MM, MV1 and 2, VV1 and 2. The clinical features, however, are little different and uh, the clinical features of both MM type 1 and type 2 uh, can be that of a classic Crudisfeld Jacob disease. Okay, whereas atypical dementia is characteristically noted in MV2 and a younger onset is usually associated with VV1 molecular subtype. Balance abnormalities are usually associated with VV2 molecular subtypes. So it is to be noted that these molecular subtypes show a variation in the clinical presentation of the patient. Hence the importance. Now the CSF in Crutusfeld Jacob disease is quite normal. There is no pleocytosis and glucose and protein concentrations are normal as well. The most useful CSF marker in Crutusfeld Jacob disease is protein 1433 and the latest technique that is the real time quaking induced conversion. Now this technique will be discussed in details in uh, just a bit. Now, 1433 is a 30 kilo Dalton protein that plays a critical role in cell proliferation, differentiation and signal transduction, as well as it regulates the neurotransmitter synthesis. Protein 1433 is also elevated in other conditions which we had previously discussed, that is encephalitis and cerebral infarction. Real time quaking induced conversion is quite specific, nearly 100 percent in Crutusfeld Jacob disease. So now coming to the real time quaking induced conversion. Now what is this technique? This technique is used for the detection of the abnormal prion proteins that is the PRPSC in accessible samples like the CSF. Now using a dedicated shaker in this technique the reaction is enhanced by vigorous intermittent shaking which induces the formation of this PRPSC protein okay and that further aggregates and forms the fibrils. The minimum amount of PRPSC in the brain that is detectable by this real time quaking induced conversion is much low that is around 10 to the power minus 15 grams. Hence this technique is quite sensitive right. The quaking in the term implies the characteristic shaking that is done in this real time quaking induced conversion. Samples suspected of containing the bisfolded prions, that is the pre RPSC, okay, are added, and then what happens is that it converts the normal prion proteins into the abnormal ones, and the protein aggregates are thereafter detected by the thioflavin T, okay, and that is visible in the spectrum fluorescence detection system, right? So let's see how. So what do we see here? We see the real time quaking induced conversion, a diagrammatic representation of the technique. Now, there are several wells as you can make out here, okay, and each of these wells are coated with the normal prion protein that is the PRPC, right? Now, when the sample is added, and if the sample contains the PRPSC, that is a misfolded prion protein, then this misfolded protein converts the normal prion proteins into the misfolded ones. They aggregate and form the fibrils. Once they aggregate and form the fibrils, they can be highlighted by the dye that is thioflavin T. It is this thioflavin T induced fluorescence which is captured by the fluorescence detection system and that is what is the precise mechanism of this technique which is a very sensitive technique which detects about 10 to the power minus 15 grams of uh, the PRPSC or the abnormal prion protein. So eventually what are the key takeaways? The key takeaways of today's lecture are Crutusfeld Jacob disease is one of the major prion diseases that we know today. Most cases of Crutusfeld Jacob disease are sporadic, right? However, variant Crutusfeld Jacob disease is a condition which is associated with bovine spongy form encephalopathy associated prion. And how a patient is infected is by the consumption of meat that is contaminated by this prion protein. 
Biopsy shows a characteristic histopathological feature that is the spongy form change and the characteristic amyloid plaques. PRP immunohistochemistry plays a decisive role in the diagnosis of the condition. And the latest technique that is the real-time quaking induced conversion on the CSF sample is quite specific for the diagnosis of prion diseases. With this, thank you so much for your patient hearing.